But we start with our interview segment and talk about the federal government's involvement in education and how it might change under the new Trump administration. The president-elect has nominated billionaire Bessie DeVos, chair of the American Federation for Children, to be secretary of education. Her nomination has been applauded by advocates of school choice and denounced by teachers' unions. To talk more about education in general and DeVos in particular, we welcome Michael McShane, Director of Education Policy at the Show Me Institute in Kansas City. Michael's a former high school teacher and holds a Ph.D. in education. Welcome back to Ruckus. Good uh, to see you again. Thanks so much for having me. Always a pleasure. I heard President-elect Trump the other day say this. The United States spends more money on education than any other country in the world, but its test results are far from being the best in the world. Is he right? That is true. I mean, maybe Luxembourg might beat us, but we, uh, we tend to be towards the top in spending and sort of middling or, or slightly below for, uh, for test results. When I was studying to be a teacher decades ago at Northwest Missouri State University, we were told that education was a state and local matter. But over the years, it seems the federal government has gotten much more involved. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was a sort of push after Sputnik. The real big federal kind of push came during the Johnson administration. That's when they first passed the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, which sort of started this slow march. Many people are probably familiar with No Child Left Behind, which was an even sort of bigger step in that. But it's still true that education is predominantly a state and local issue. Generally, they spend about, the Fed spend about 10 cents on every education dollar, the rest coming from local sources and state sources. Well, what does it do? Why does it exist? exist? What's its role? Well, really, the two largest federal programs in terms of dollars provide for Title I, which is funding for low-income students and funding for students with special needs. Now, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that gets mixed into there, but when you want to talk in dollars and cents, terms in K-12 education. Now, there's still higher ed with Pell Grants and student loans and all of that, but with K-12 education, the two largest budget items are for those kids. But they provide money to school districts, they right? They do. And yes. school districts have to conform to what the federal government wants to get that money. Yes, that's exactly right. An old friend of mine has a saying, the federal government is, is good at making uh, people do things. It's not necessarily good at making them do it well. Uh, and that's, I think, an a, a eternal problem with federal education policy. As always, Michael, there is mixed reaction to a cabinet nominee <laughs> and certainly for Betsy DeVos. What is the argument for her? What do her advocates say? I mean, she's been a passionate advocate for school choice for almost three decades now, uh, both in her native Michigan and around the the country. And it's an issue that's been gaining salience all across the country. More and more states are expanding charter schools, looking at private school choice as well. So I think she's really kind of riding the tide of this school choice wave that's happening all across the country. All right. The teachers unions don't like her. What is their argument against her? Well, I think the exact inverse of that. They tend to be more skeptical of school choice, not as in favor of charter schools, especially not in favor of things like school vouchers or others. So the, the same reason her supporters like her is the same reason many of her detractors don't. Cliff Notes, uh, if you will, give us your Cliff Notes version of what Common Core is, because oh there's a big question oh, about there whether is. Betsy DeVos is for or against Common Core. Yeah, so the Common Core was a set of standards, so goals that students were supposed to reach at a particular time that were agreed upon initially by a group of governors and chief state school officers, really pushed by the Obama administration for more and more states to, to adopt them. And it's unclear exactly... Right now, Betsy DeVos is saying that she is opposed to the Common Core, but some of the organizations that she was affiliated with had been supportive at the time. So I think she has some explaining to do, particularly for people on the political right, as to where that change happened. But hasn't Donald Trump said he's against Common Core? Oh, he's Core? completely against so it, it really doesn't to get matter, rid of it. It really doesn't matter what Betsy DeVos thinks, I think does it, in the long run. Uh, when you're talking about a cabinet secretary, the president makes the final decision. I think that's exactly right, yes. Do you think this nomination is going to be difficult to confirm for Republicans in the Senate? But, uh, you know, it seems to me it's going to be a bit of a battle, but not a, a serious yeah, one. I think that the Common Core skirmish is out there. I think they have the ability to clear that up. And I think there are probably other cabinet nominees that are going to be taking more of the heat. So I don't expect a huge fight, but, you know, stranger things have happened. 
Uh, one of your colleagues told me there's some speculation nationally that you might be asked to join oh. the Department of Education, <laughs> the federal level. Oh, boy. If I had to leave Kansas City, I'd miss all the great programming <laughs> on KCPT, which might be a cross too heavy to bear. Are you saying you're not willing to take a look at it? Oh, listen, if, if people want to reach out to me, I'll, I'll always listen, but it would be, it would be a tough sell. Hey, great. Uh, don't leave Kansas City. We need you here. Thanks <laughs> Thank for coming you. in this morning. Thank you. That is Michael McShane with the Show Me Institute in Kansas City. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.